What's up, live stream? Whoa, that was different. What's up? <laughs> you went first that time. I went first. <laughs> Did you hear his pause? He paused. I was like, what's he going to do? <sighs> well, I'm always the one that goes, oh, you go ahead. I always feel like a jerk about it, too. Hey, parents, students, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our neighborhood. I feel like it's, you can't say neighborhood. You want start putting on, <laughs> we start changing my shoes. And, <laughs> no. The music before we start, you know, that countdown music really wants me to keep going with the countdown yeah. music. But I love you yeah. guys. I just want to keep jamming to that too. We so. do. You don't, you don't see us. We pray in um, mm -hmm. before we, we do that. But then sometimes, you know, we're yeah, just not really. Maybe me a little bit. Like literally that much. And He's it. doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway. Hey, I have a question for you. Imagine that. Oh, yeah. wait, first, I gotta say before you do this question, do you what? know that what? that it what? always comforts me. What? Your question. It always sets me at ease. Like that. I always, it, like intensity could, level when the show starts is like up here, and then you're like first question. And I'm like, all right. What could possibly go more wrong than it's already gone wrong? Right. Yeah. In the first five minutes. In the first five minutes. Okay. Hey, <laughs> CV's on tonight. CV. What's up? There he is. There he is. You know what I like about Charles? Is we always we always say hey CB when he least expect it like I think he has an Oreo in his mouth right now. <laughs> yep. he did. He did. He's always looking. And at he's got a paper in his hand. And he's like, oh. you know, you but know, he doing something cool. a lot more important than us. And he he's always like, looks cool though. Oh right, I'm a yeah. part of this too. All right, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. all right. Question. Here yes. we go. Okay, okay. Uh, let's talk first about last week. Okay. That ice cream that you got me. That I didn't get you. Cause you lost. I know. I know. And you did not I buy me ice cream. Oh, Bro, I, I am looking forward to some Hagen dyes man. Ten dollar, maybe twelve dollar. We did not. We did not I want specify some ice cream. Cold Stone, Freddy's, Culver's. Sure. Um, sure, sure, sure. What's those other ones? What other ice cream places we got out there? Which favorite ice cream? Brewsters. 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 Text in your favorite ice cream place. Cold uh, Stone, probably. Farm yeah. Burger. Yeah, has an ice cream down here. Farm Burger. Yeah, seventeen bucks. Seventeen bucks for ice cream. cream. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 So okay. Um, so what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to make it up? Because you, you you lost. All right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. Let's let, let's make a deal. All okay. Right. So what I'm gonna do is because I missed this past week. Yeah. Then this coming up week. I should give you a buy because you were in a car accident. Well, it's okay. I'm I'm, I'm not going to. But I, I know you won't. <laughs> Thanks for the love. So uh, I should. How about this? How about I do family ministry? I buy ice cream for all the family ministry. Joe, or of course me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, yes, that Joe, would be order number one. Uh, yeah. Joe, Catherine, Pastor Ben, me. Yep. Okay. Okay. I and I'll, like I'll even I'll even throw in you know like Daisy. I'll do I'll do I'll, I'll okay. do all of family all right. ministry. All right. All right. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, all right. All right. Uh, is that good? Even I am. I, I am in satisfied. Car accident, but I am. Not, are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do feel bad that you were in a car accident, and I am very Thank grateful you. that you and your family were. Thank you. Praise well. God. And, yeah, I'm just praying time. to continue that. You oh, Paisley back. family's watching. Um, welcome, guys. It's good to have you all in one piece. Um, okay, so question for you. If you were a fighter jet pilot, what would your call sign be? Charles, it's coming to you too, so be thinking hard about this one. Bull. <laughs> like the, the cow, the male version of a cow. The how long did you think yeah, about that? Version of a cow, yeah. Hmm? How long did you think about that? I, about well, it kind of comes one to my head. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of an improv guy, so it kind of comes to my say. My why, 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 why can't like it feel like I cheapened out the answer? I feel like it's almost answer? inappropriate. Bull. That is yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Toro. No, because nah, Toro, Toro, Toro is a bad yeah. plane movie. Yeah. Um, uh, El Toro. That's the bull. El Toro? <laughs> El Toro. El Toro! What about you? Uh, I don't know. Something like, Charles, what do you want? <laughs> uh, it'd probably be Charlie. That was a quick it's my shift life. over. Mirage. What a Dude, great! Do you know what? What a great! If you put your fighter glasses on, you would look just like the guy in the first Top Gun that flies with Maverick. Okay. Charles is showing my seen, age. Charles has only seen two mind. movies. Um, I've seen three, and he's only he, seen Charles two. Charles is like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, I'm I don't, not old. I don't have a VCR. Yeah, I, I can't watch movies like that anymore. I don't. <laughs> What's a VCR? Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, students. You're like, what is? What are they talking? Okay. About? Um, Come on. Call sign. Uh, probably like, like my middle name is Charles. Toucan. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. 
Like, I don't know. Something I'm like, sorry, man. I don't know. Something. That's what you get for the car accident. Dude, comment. Does it have to be mean? I don't know. These are not. Sam. Your, these are not your questions. <laughs> these are my questions. Sorry. Whenever I order coffee, I got tired of people asking me when I order coffee, is that Steven with the PHRV? It doesn't matter. It's going to sound the same. Just and then the, and then He's and, then, the and then they mess it up and then they call me Stefan when they get it. It's not Stefan, it's Stephen. Okay, Stephon. read the Bible. Um, come to church, you'll learn how to pronounce it. Dr. George will eventually <laughs> preach on Stephen. <laughs> that works so, well at a Starbucks, right? So, so what I tell people now is I tell them Bob. <laughs> They'll tell me, "What do you, uh, what do you Blue want, bear. Bob?" And then it's it's B O B. There's no way to misspell Bob. So, yeah. um, I guess you could call me the Bob. Bob. Uh, Bob Bob? The Bob. You would literally be Bob. As your call sign, and you're Bob. you're upset at me for saying bull, and yours is Bob. Bull, bull Bob in the Mirage. <laughs> bull Bob in the Mirage. That sounds like a really bad '80s sitcom. Yeah, bull Bob in the 80s, at bad '80s show. We're gonna just turn this ship around here. <laughs> Send it the other direction. If you have a call sign that you want us to call out, oh, I'd love to. Text in awesome. a call sign. I'll get a call sign from Pierce and Cheyenne and the girls. Emery, Anya, and Elise. Text in your call sign. Um, yeah, so it'd be good. Oh, we got... Yeah, 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 yeah. Charles, we're not allowed to call you that. Okay, that's inappropriate. Not, it's, not a, it's not a bad word. It's just, it's just people are so delicate these days. But yeah, that's... It's so, it's so interesting because I, when I thought of... What, what just happened? Anyway, we're going to do our memory verse now. We're so moving our, on, shifting. Yeah, we're going to do our memory verse now. Hey, yes. uh, what's our memory verse, Mr. Charles? And then we're going to open a word of prayer. Ah, this is my turn to do this one. Your, your the turn. Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Nahum 1 7. I think about that. I just I keep going back to the Lord is good. There is not like the Lord might be good, or the Lord sometimes is good. The Lord is good. And and you that's really a, a belief system that mm-hmm. you have to build into your life. You have to either believe that God is good all the time, or he's not. Because when you're going through a, a, a tough time, it's hard to see God's goodness in it. I mean, you guys were in a car accident. You're like, what's the goodness of God in that? Mm-hmm. Uh, not that he sent that your way, but but he knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. And so, how is the Lord good when bad happens? Um, how is uh, how, why does bad things ha- why do bad things happen to good people? Um, why do good things happen to bad people? And mm-hmm. you have to see God's. You have to you have to come to the place in your life, or it'll drive you crazy. Uh, and this is a this is a of the Bible stance on the Lord is good. Mm-hmm. He he is good. He does not mean people ill. Um, right. I'm so thankful that we serve. There are gods in the the world that the world has created mm-hmm. that are that are evil gods. Now we don't we don't believe that the Bible teaches that uh, our God is a figment of our imagination or creation, but that He existed before us. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when I think of other gods. Uh, that other little g gods mm-hmm. they were created by men that, and the bible talks about that they car- they carve a statue and they cover it with gold and it's just a, it's just a statue and then people give it a name and um and that's their 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 god right. but um our god uh is is eternal and then he he says he is good and right so I and really... that's the saying you know good does not describe god but god describes good mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah. Absolutely. Hey, we're gonna open a prayer. You're gonna go preach for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna do some. We have couple some minutes. We have some give new. Give me things. about seven minutes, guys. Yeah. Okay, we have some new things going on tonight. It's fall. We do. We want to change it up a little. We're bit. We're changing we're it up again. Some... Einstein's changing it up a little bit. Well, I don't really know what he's going for. That look. I don't know. For. It's he's, he's going. Do people notice that he changes his hat? Every I don't know. Nobody texts in. Nobody. It know. doesn't. Have you noticed that? I don't think Einstein. This is our. We're over six months, which is four shows a month. So this is like our twenty fourth show. Wow. I don't think he's ever Quick repeated math. a look. Yeah. I don't know. He's never repeated it. Look, I don't think he ever has. No. Um, he's that. If you were sitting there wondering in your life, what does? I wonder what Einstein looks like if he was just Einstein. I was gonna say from Persia. Then um, yeah. that's boom, boom. Welcome to live stream. Be informed. If you wanted to know what, you could probably look into the earlier shows of this. Yes. And probably see if Einstein grew up in the country. Yes. Like me, like I grew up. Yes. In the co- in the country, yes. you know. could know what we it know. looks like with a mullet on. You would know, yeah, yeah, what a mullet was like. You yeah. would know. You want to wear it? You Einstein. Wanna, you I, would, I I dug what I, I dug would, wearing that man. That was, you would, that was you would grow a mullet if your wife would let you. Uh, nope. Uh, We're gonna open a word. We have no mullets. No mullets. Go ahead. Let's pray. Father, thanks for the time to hang out with uh, the students and their parents. Father, random staff members. We love them all, and we pray that you would help us to engage in your word tonight, and that you would help us to. I understand what Joe has studied and uh, what you have for us. Pray to help us have fun. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
these sermons with a question, but how many times have you seen in the world where the world is continually driven by fear and continually driven by uh, sayings as in, uh, get what you can now, um, make sure your masterpiece is now because you only get one canvas. Uh, a lot of times when we look at the world, the world revolves around getting everything now. The life is now. Um, there is nothing beyond this. There is nothing that uh, goes beyond this. So a lot of time it creates uh, a problem of fear. It creates a problem of, you know, make sure I get what I can, can what I get, and sit on the can. And a lot of times that drives people uh, through this world, but they miss a large part of uh, what Christianity is all about, is going beyond um, this world. And tonight, we're in a passage that has an opportunity for fear, has an opportunity for has an opportunity for, for fear. Sorry, guys, starting over, I had no sound on there. So, oh, I did? Okay, good. So, had an opportunity of fear. Um, to see that through this, but how do we work through it? How do we step through when the world comes with fear to us, but not in the way that you would think? In this passage, it's a little different. It's not, it's not necessarily anger. It's not necessarily uh, somebody bullying someone else, but it's a fear opposite way, but a lot of us walk through the same um, passage as Paul does. Uh, to give you a, a quote, Ken Ham, who has done the uh, ARC exhibit, has also done the Creation Museum, uh, he had a saying that was, if everything fades to black, then what is the point of the next generation? What is the point of helping the next generation if everything fades to black? Because that's a lot of the mentality of the world, is that everything fades to black, that uh, life goes on. When that ends, it's like a TV show. Everything closes off. And it's done. But the truth is that we know as Christians that there is something beyond here. There is, this is just a, we're, we're just sojourners. We are not staying here and not walking past here. So when we become Christians and we start walking in this world and start seeing the world really as it is, uh, we start seeing how fear is driven through here. And it brings up really a question that is also our, our title tonight. Uh, but the question is, are you living to die or are you dying to live? And we are in um, Acts 21 verses 8 through 14 tonight. But that is a question that a lot of us should really gauge and look at. The fact is, is are you living to die or are you dying to live? So to give you, as you guys are turning to there, uh, to give you a little backdrop, this is Paul walking through Acts. He's already been called into his mission. He's already been stepping through many, many cities and being able to take every opportunity to uh, speak to Christians, to be able to continue to relay the gospel, but also give them updates and give them um, opportunities to know what his missions are like as he's walking through all these other places. And he's coming up to the city of Caesarea. And through this, we'll, we'll read through this passage, but he has an opportunity to meet some people that he had already seen before, talked before, and has been mentioned. They have been mentioned in the Bible before. Uh, but it's interesting because they don't portray the same thing that you, would, you have seen earlier in Acts. So as we start in verse 18, it says, On the next day we departed and came to Caesarea, and we entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying with him for, four, uh, for many days, a prophet named Agabus came to, J to Judea and came to us. And he took Paul's belt and bound his feet and his hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, This is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. When he heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what are you doing, weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we ceased and said, let the will of the Lord be done. So as you can see this, we already, we already introduced to somebody that we know from the past, right? Philip. Philip is a person that walked with Jesus. Philip is a person that saw Jesus do miracles. And Philip 
is a person that now has an opportunity to have the same strength as Paul, yet he doesn't. Something happens to him. And tonight we have three points that I kind of want to walk through. And they're fear, the stand, and the change. And the first point is fear. If you look at this, this moment, everyone is in fear except Paul. They're in fear because they see something prophesied, and they automatically jump from, okay, so he's going to get in trouble or get hurt. That means that he doesn't need to go. And that's not the case. The fact is, is that he still does need to go. The fact is, is that he still does need to move. But just like the world, automatically is jumped into a fear. Automatically is jumped beyond just, hey, you need to watch out, to becoming, now you don't need to go at all. This is Philip talking, who also walked with Christ, is saying, you don't need to go. But the question is, is what do we do at that second? I give you a little instance too. This came to me as I'm studying this as well, and Pastor Stephen mentioned it as well. So I was in a car accident on Thursday, Thursday night. My whole family, we were in our car. Uh, but there is something that happened at that moment where I could have gone two different ways. I could have feared and feared the unknown and feared what was going to happen, what was going to be, or I could step back and know, hey, God has this. There's not anything that somehow God has missed. And I chose that. I chose not to fear. I chose not to go forward in that path because I know that it would lead to destruction. It would lead to a problem. Charles Spurgeon says, The worst evils of life are those which do not exist except in our imagination. If we had no troubles but only real troubles... We should not have the tenth part of our present sorrows. We feel a thousand deaths in fearing one, but the Christian is cured of the disease of fearing. What he's saying there is most of it's in our imagination. Most of fear is really and truly is the unknown. The reason we fear is because we don't know. And it's sad to say but when you look at it deeper than that, fear is also saying, God, you don't know. That if I'm going to fear, that means that it's uncertain, and which means you never planned for this. I could have easily looked at a car accident and said, God, you never planned for this. How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to know? But I know God knows. And what is happening right here is people are automatically falling into fear. And this happens in the world. And it's not... These people aren't being malicious. These people aren't being angry, which is interesting because in our lives, we've had people like that, that are fearful for us and say, ah, you should, probably shouldn't do that. We've done it. I've done it. I've done it to somebody and said, ah, I'm fearful for you to not do that. But the truth is, is I'm relaying that now I'm jumping from something of precaution to a fear as if somehow God didn't have any plan for this. God didn't know. And this is what's occurring right now is he has a group of people that are fearful, very fearful. So what the world lives by is not what we should live by. But the question I have for you is, do you live like this? Do you live daily in fear? Do you live daily in worrying about the unknown, worrying about tomorrow, stressing out about what's going to happen in life? If I do this, what will happen there? If I do this, what will happen there? You continue on your life like that. And what happens is, is you slowly walk into a day and night of fear. Stress has happened and the first thing that goes through your mind is fear. Not relying on anybody, but just fear. Not relying on God, but fear. And sometimes we get stuck in fearing in a situation, and we're missing God's opportunities. Imagine if Paul would have said, you know what? You're right. You guys are fearful. I see this prophet. He's saying that I'm going to get bound. So that must mean that I don't need to go to Jerusalem. He could have easily have said that. But what would that have done? Look at all the impact 
Paul has throughout the remainder of Acts into his letters to see what he did if he didn't take that step. You realize this is a path. He went to Jerusalem, which then got bound and went into Rome. And in Rome is where he spent his last days. So imagine if that never occurred. Imagine if he stayed in that fear or fell into that fear and decided, I'm not going to go. The opportunity that would have been missed. So that is living to die. That is living in this world and not living for the next. You're more worried about what happens right now and stressing about what happens right now and not knowing about the future instead of investing in God to know that you do have a future beyond here. So point number two, that was point one, was the fear. Now comes the stand. Now comes Paul, who goes the opposite way of the crowd and says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to fall into fear. The people, people are heartbroken and crying to him. And Paul understands that, but Paul also understands that I have a calling. I have something that goes beyond myself. I can easily fear, but I'm not going to. In 1 Corinthians 16, 13, this is what he says. He says, be on alert, stand firm in faith, act like men, be strong. He's standing right there and saying that. This letter to the Corinthians is after this. This is his letter to say, I did this. I'm not telling you this because somebody else has done it. I've walked it. I've stepped forward. He has made a stand. But the question is, why should we stand firm? Why? Why do we need to stand firm? Is it a worldly thing? Is it something that is driven into our heads that we have to? Um, The truth is, is there's an old saying that says, uh, if you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. And it stands true. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall into anything that could happen. And that could have easily happened to Paul. That could have easily set him on a different course. But he took a stand. So my question for you is, are you taking a stand? Are you taking a stand in faith? When these tough times come, are you falling into fear? Or are you taking a stand? Are you saying, no, I'm not going to be fearful? As Paul says through here, uh, then Paul answered, what are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart, for I am ready not only to be in prison, but even to die in Jerusalem for Jesus Christ. Now, this mention of brokenheartedness and weeping is not the fact that he's looking at them in sorrow. He's not looking at them and feeling sorry for them. He's looking at them and saying, how can you do this? Have you not seen Christ work? He's looking at Philip and saying, Philip, you were there when Christ called Nathan or Nathaniel. When Christ called Nathaniel and said, I saw you under the tree. I saw you and I'm calling you to me. You mean to tell me that all that time was good, but now when a stressful situation comes that you're going to crumble as if I'm not supposed to be called, or I'm not supposed to be doing this. And Paul's saying, no, I will, I will, I will, I will die for Christ. So it's a hard question to ask, I know, and I get it. And I'm not telling you, I'm not giving you this answer, but I'm asking you this question. Are you ready to do that in your life? Are you ready to sacrifice the flesh, and give everything to God? Are you ready, are you willing to say, I'm going to cast aside everything else so that I can make sure I glorify God? This is the opposite. This is the dying to live. And what I mean by dying to live is, as Paul says, I die to myself every day. Every day I wake up. And I die to the flesh that I have. I die to the sin that is going to surround me today. I die to all the fleshly desires that I have so that I can live for Christ. 
So are you doing that? Are you dying to live? Are you sacrificing everything that surrounds you? Fears, anxieties, stresses, worries, this world that throws so much stuff at you every single day. Are you waking up every morning and saying, I don't need any of that. I would rather sacrifice all that to make sure that I glorify God today, that I walk in the light of Christ. The last thing that we go through is the last point is the change. So go fear, standing, the change. Because what happens is, is you would think, okay, all of a sudden they're going to keep fighting or they're going to get argued or they're just going to run off. But what really happens is you start to see a change of heart. You start to look at them and see, okay. So at the end they say, let the will of the Lord be done. After he's not going to argue or he's not going to, he's not going to relent, we realize that he is sacrificing exactly what he said he was going to do to make sure he's following Christ. It's amazing to see what happens when we stand for our faith and people see it around us. When tough times come or crucial moments come and we rely on God, it's amazing to see what people do. Many change. But you can't say oh, all of them are going to, and I don't want you to think that all of a sudden, well, then if I do this, if I, if I follow Christ, and that means that everybody behind me that sees this is automatically going to know that they're a sinner and automatically going to come to Christ. It's not true. I can't lie to you and say that that's just going to happen. But the point is, is we don't control that. We plant the seed. We water. We do not produce the growth. As a matter of fact, as we dig farther into Acts, and Paul does go to Jerusalem, even speaking to the crowd in Hebrew, trying to calm them, they still plot to kill him. They still shackle him, and they still take him to Rome. But he didn't care. He wasn't there to see the growth. He was there to plant the seed. There were many that did come to Christ. There were more that came to know who Christ was than just those that were plotting on him. But he's saying, don't conform. This is, this is him in Romans, but he is saying it now as well. Don't conform to the pattern of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Make sure you are walking in the light of Christ. Are you dying every day? Are you standing and you're going to see a change. Not only in yourself, you're going to see a change in people around you. To understand all of this, to go through each part of this, we can't look at scripture and say, okay, this is an isolated incident. This just happens here, maybe in another page, but it does not happen in my life. Don't lie to yourself. Every day, we all live in a world that is driven by fear. And we have a choice. We can fall into it. We can stand up. And we can make a difference. So as I'm closing and I'm finishing this out, I have to ask again, are you dying to live? Or are you living to die? Are you just focused on this world? Are you just focused on today? Are you just focused on the canvas that you have? and not the future? Or are you making a decision that my place is in heaven? I'm just a sojourner through here. And I will sacrifice all that is in the world because that doesn't, it, it's not gonna get me anywhere. It's gonna have me in depression. It's gonna have me in fighting for things that I don't need to be fighting for. I'm going to choose the opposite side. I'm going to choose to walk in the light of Christ. Maybe you're listening to this and, and you realize that you have lived your life in fear, that you don't, you don't have that other side. You don't know of that other side. You don't know of the glory of heaven. I ask you tonight, as I pray out, that you open your heart and your mind to understand that Christ is there for you. Christ will embrace you. You don't have to live in that fear 
You don't have to live in that world that makes you think everything you do has to match up to someone else. And the fear of the unknown because tomorrow you don't know. Christ will give you that knowledge for tomorrow. Before I pray, there's a last thing that I, a quote that I, I absolutely love by C.S. Lewis. It's short, but it's impactful. It says, you can't go back and change the beginning, but can you, you can start where you are and change the ending. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to sacrifice and die to the world every day? to know that you're living with Christ in heaven. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you once again for this time and this opportunity. Lord, I praise you and thank you for your word and your message. It's amazing to me that we can open up your scripture and see our life reflected in every page. Lord, don't let us fall into any fear. Don't let the crowds overpower us with worry and strife. But let us do as Paul did and stand firm, make a stand, make a change. I pray that you strengthen us this week and those that do not know you, Lord, I pray that you embrace them, strengthen them. Let their open arms, Lord, be filled with your love and grace. I pray that you bless them with the opportunity of seeing a world beyond here a world beyond the fear and the worry. We thank you and praise you for everything you do for us. Continue to be the lamp at our feet. Continue to be the hand on our shoulders and continue to be the words in our heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Pastor Joe. Appreciate that, man. I was thinking about that, <clears throat> that die daily. Hmm. I was thinking about, I never thought about this before until you brought it up. And you didn't really bring it up. This is just a side point. Okay. You know me inside points. Um, <laughs> and here we go. And here we go. Uh, I was thinking, I was trying to think of like something that I that I didn't give into, like a fleshly desire, whatever mm -hmm. it was. I was thinking to think if I regretted any of them. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't think of like something that I, that like some type of temptation that I didn't, I'm not saying I don't give in to yeah, yeah, any, yeah. yeah. But like one that I didn't give into that I regret not giving into. I can't even remember them. No. Like in the moment, it was you know it was a hard decision. It was like okay, I have to really decide that it's not my life to live. It's the Lord's you know steward, giving me to steward. Right. Um, but but I can't think of one that I. It's interesting. I never I, until you. Well, that's right the up, world's methodology, right? That's that's what it. You're does. gonna miss it's out. Like, yeah. It makes you fear of missing out, so yeah. you need to do it, and yeah. then. But and you know how but I get tell you out. this: things that you did that you know you should have done and yeah. you didn't do, they haunt you. Sure. You remember those. Yeah. I remember the decisions that I should have spoken to somebody about Christ sure. yeah, or yeah. the decision that yeah. I decided to go against. I remember those when I did make those decisions, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit yeah. is guiding you and saying, yeah, yeah. but we remember, yeah. you know. Good, good times. Good times. Good man. times. Cool. Good times. Yeah, good. Yeah. Hey, okay. all right, we're going to move on to our funny bits. Funny bits. Funny bits. Funny bits. Yeah. <laughs> Two old guys trying to be funny. <laughs> Two uh, old guys. Oh, one, my wife texted guy. in, um, and she said if I had a call sign, it would be the schnoz. The schnoz. See, that sounds like I a muppet. I don't Who doesn't say that sounds, I like, a, that sounds like a muppet? I don't understand what it has to do the with schnoz. me. The schnoz. I don't get it. All right, so. Um, maybe. Or maybe you would be like a like a cat burglar. The schnoz. Like, oh, you left a coin or something like that. Like, oh. What? This is this crime is done by the schnoz. Oh. Um, <laughs> how come you get to be a call sign guy and I have, uh, I'm a cat burglar. Um <laughs> All right, we got to do our funny bits. We have, you know, some, sometimes in life there's expectation and there's reality. People turn this on and they're expecting. I don't know, what you, I don't know what you guys are expecting. And then reality and is. We have, we. <laughs> Pastor Steve and Pastor Jeff. So um, there's expectation. You, you know, you go and you, you, I was really what birthed this. Mm -hmm. And this, this in my mind was I was eating Lucky Charms last night for dinner. Oh, my daughter was eating Lucky Charms for dinner. It's a great I dinner. was eating granola for dinner. Because sometimes the Knicks just want cereal for dinner. I don't know if hey, that's hey. an easily thing. Hey, hey. Sometimes I come home and I'm like, honey, I just want cereal for dinner. And she's like, what a sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, darn. Uh, yeah. Bummer. I saw her tell her sometimes I just want cereal for dinner. <laughs> and my wife was eating, or my daughter was eating Lucky Charms because it's an oat-based cereal. So therefore, it's a little better than like the garbage. Sure. You know what? You Two know Big Macs and a Diet Coke type of thing? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so and I was looking at them and they're, you know, the little song they sing that you probably know, the hearts, stars, and clovers, yeah. you know, whatever. Lucky the, Charms. Yeah. yeah. 
I, my wife's like, my daughter asked for a unicorn. And I was like, what do you mean a unicorn? There's not a unicorn here. And my wife's like, yeah, it's the blue and white blob. <laughs> and it had nothing. So then I thought, no expectation. I wonder <laughs> if the rest of the one, there's expectation versus reality. And so Charles hit me with an expectation. Give me an expectation. That's Ooh, a Big Mac. Two all beef patty, special sauce, Let's lettuce, cheese lettuce, on a onion. sesame seed bun. Yeah. So, uh, all right. What is what is reality, Charles? That's reality right there. <laughs> Kaka, go back to go look at the sesame seeds. Go back to expectations. Uh, they're perfectly placed. They've never looked that good in reality. Have you ever seen the photoshops that they do? Yeah, like the photo yeah, people yeah, that yeah. they make? They're yeah. not even real. All right, go, go to the next one, Charles. Hit me with the next one. Expectation. Venice, man. Venice. Oh, oh, beautiful. beautiful mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah, those somebody little, singing on a boat. Those little boaters for like 20 minutes. Gondola? 20, 30 minutes, like yeah. 150 bucks. Crazy. All right, give me give me, give me oh, reality man, of people on Venice. That's, that's reality right there, yeah. Okay, give me another expectation. Expectation. Wait, where is that? I should, uh, is that India? Yeah, that's not that's not the Taj Mahal. No, it's not Taj Mahal. Okay, go ahead. Good. Yeah, I probably should know. Uh, <laughs> that's reality. That's right reality. There. There you, you go. can't even see anything at there all or go. get anywhere. Disney World has these. All right, give me another expectation, Charles. Ooh, that's somewhere that's cool Greece. looking. That's great. Okay, yeah, that's, that's the expectation. Greece. That. Oh, oh. But look at that. Like you couldn't even get through that. The cruise ship came and, it, and unloaded, and it was there. Oh my gosh! It unloaded. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, all right. Give me another expectation. Oh, Woo. Yeah, beautiful, a, pristine beach. That's a good looking beach right there. Give me reality. Yeah. Oh! Reality. Oh my gosh! You don't even it's see like the beach. It's man. Like, hey, honey, let's go find a spit of land. You. Uh, Cheyenne says, Myanmar. Myanmar. Thanks for being. Myanmar. Thanks Myanmar. for being an informed, educated person, Cheyenne. Yep. Unlike us. Unlike us. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, give me give me expectation. Stonehenge, man, in in England, uh, that is that's a good looking pile of rocks there. And I, then what's reality? Uh, oh my gosh, you c- that's okay. You know that somebody bought Stonehenge. I'm trying to think of the story backstory of Stonehenge. You have to look, look at the backstory; it's interesting. All right, uh, give me another expectation. Wow, you know the backstory of Stonehenge. Somebody needs to look up the backstory of Stonehenge. It's really interesting. It was it was a pile of rocks and it wasn't very popular and then somebody bought it for a song. Yeah. And then donated to the 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 crown and said, I will give you this very historic pile of rocks if you promise to always keep it free for people. And so I think it's free as far as I know. Well yeah, you could tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh Great Wall of China, I know this one. Yeah. Okay, give it what's what's reality. And oh, oh come on. Oh, that's a lot of people. Do you know that they make you use mortar, they use rice for the mortar? Really? Yep. To build the wall. Are you making that up? Nope. Nope. Spit Where did you rice. read that? Spit and rice. On the Google? No, not on Wikipedia. Like on real places with real facts. With real, like, well, like, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Real. Like Reddit or something? No, like okay. actual. <laughs> All right, give me another expectation. Hey, that's uh, the Charles Bridge in oh, yeah. Uh, Prague. Prague. Yeah. Yeah. Give me reality, man. <laughs> I, have, I have been on that bridge, and that's what it does look that's like. That's what it looks like? Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's ridiculous. Yeah, but it's still worth it. You should go. All right, sure, if you All can right. ever see anything. Oh, we're getting into food. Oh, we're getting into good, good, Woo! good. Okay, right. nailed it. Nailed some expectations. That's uh, what? That's Mr. Oh, yeah. O- O-Leaf or something? O-Leaf? That does not look good. O- that looks scary. That What's was scary, o- kid. O- Olaf. Okay. Olaf. Oh, have you presented that to a kid? That looks like Elmo and just a... Why does it look like he's he's dieting oh, on one side? It looks like Gonzo from the Muppets. Why is he dieting on one side, but the other side... It, the diet didn't enough. work. It just moved. Is that a stick? Moved Those two sticks of the arm? All the stuff to the other side. Yeah. Uh, no. All right. No. Give, me, give me the next one. Oh, yeah. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Good looking Santa Claus. Oh, yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to look like a monkey. Hit me with it, Charles. Hit me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that parent just gave up. They were just like, "Yeah, nothing's is happening." No, nope. who? Why is Santa smiley Cla- face on this one? Two dots on that one. I'm Santa done. Claus's beard like 15 times bigger. That is a monkey, man. That looks that, like a monkey. I saw a Santa Claus one time at McDonald's, and he he looked did like a monkey. Not, it was like in July. No, and he was in he, July. It was in July because he was He's warming up. He, he was belly <laughs> beard. He was he was a legit Santa Claus. It wasn't like a fake one, and he looked cool, man. And he was a ha- like he had the suspenders on everything. And I, I told him, I was like, you look like a cool Santa Claus. And he was like, Merry Christmas, son. And I just, it was, it was yeah, cool. Yeah, because he's probably crazy and really thinks he's Santa. <laughs> no, I don't he's In nice. July? He's yeah. nice. All right, hit me another one. Yeah, this is just life. What is it? Is that supposed to be a pancake of a, what is that, a, a wrap? What is it? Is that a, what's the little, <laughs> I what's, don't know, but what's the little thing in uh, Madagascar? Lemurs. Lemurs. Is that a lemur? All right, hit me with reality. Be. Whatever this one is, is not going to be. Oh. What is that? 
That's just once again. Rise and shine. Parents just gave up. Rise and shine, daughter. Here's a. <laughs> at least the parent tried. It's you a know? lemur. <laughs> All right, hit me, Charles. Oh yeah, Cookie Monster. Was that cupcakes. Elmo? Cookie Monster. Oh, Cookie Monster. Oh, that's the guy's name is Cookie Monster. How come everybody else gets a name and he's just? Have a... you ever seen Sesame Street? No, nah, we weren't allowed to watch that garbage. <laughs> Comparison wise, well, oh, nailed it. Oh, I thought those were cans for a minute. Like, <laughs> kids say mouse cupcake. Fair enough. Okay. All right. What else you got? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Minion. Despicable minion. Me. Yep. All right. Oh, oh. poor minion got Man, melted. I don't What happened? Got melted. He's sitting on top of a dryer. <laughs> Look where he is in life. <laughs> You made it to the dryer. You ever had? Well, hold on. I gotta ask this question. Out of all the places that you could have placed this cake, yeah. to make at least yeah. the surroundings look better, yeah, you put it on top of a dryer, yeah. So that's a. Once again, parents just gave up. Like, yeah. I'm just have taking you, a picture of it. It's had, on the dryer. Have you ever had your washer or your dryer in your living room before, or your kitchen before? We had one. We had a house. Uh, no, not in the kitchen. I've had it, it was off in the to kitchen. the side, but yeah, it was okay. In right. the kitchen. Hey, Charles. Porcupine or hedgehog, whatever that thing is. Oh, hedgehog. Is that it says that hedgehog. looks scary. That's a terrifying. You, you think that's what? scary? That's nothing, that's... bro. Look at the teeth on that on the front. Oh. What is that? Oh. He looks like his he should head be on got Monsters ran Incorporated. Over. Looks like his head got ran over and then like a pufferfish is all just popped off. Okay. Um, what do you got, Charles? Let me let me ask Rubber you a question. Duck cupcakes. When you were hold Why on, would Charles. You do that. That's what I want to know. Why would you? Those go in the bathtub. I do I not want to eat people, a duck. I bet you people in a hundred years when they're watching, because in a hundred years, <laughs> I think I I think this, people are gonna watch our show and see that as American. You think <laughs> people are gonna watch our show? And they're probably gonna look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're probably gonna look at oh, Einstein and be like, speaking about reality. Why do those morons put a Persian hat on? Insult their culture. It's not an insult. It's a compliment that you How made it to the live stream. Know. Okay, be grateful. Yeah. All right, Charles. Hey, hundred people from hundred years. Why? From now. Stop it. Why? Stop it. Why would you make them ducks? You know what? It, you know what my mom would say if if this happened to us, but she would never have done that. You're still gonna eat them. You're still gonna eat them. Nixes yeah. eat our failures as well as our successes. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, you're oh you're eating cupcakes. Yeah. That's happening. Uh, and now, okay, and I'll say this. To and you're my enjoy side it. Of it. My my childhood, I would have never complained about that. Why? Because I got cupcakes. That sounds cool. Yeah. Yellow blob. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. I'll, I'll take six. All right. How <laughs> does it, please? <laughs> Melted the crayon art. That's a good looking. That's good looking. I like that. All right, hit me with it reality. It's not gonna happen. Oh. oh! Duct tape. You know they took duct tape and a lighter. You know it's a duct country tape and a lighter. lighter. Yeah, you know what it was. Oh, all right, Charles. Are we almost done with this? I can't take these much longer. Beautiful Rainbow pancakes. pancakes. That's a good looking pancake, Charles. Yeah, I like that. Oh. oh. Yeah, no. Look at this. Is that a pat of butter on top? It looks like the minion got cut up and put back in on pancakes. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'm looking to see what the accoutrements will be. Oh, another, another minion, minion cake. cake. Hey, another minion cake. What's this kid's name? Essen? Esan. Esan? Esan? Minion cake. All right, here we go. Oh. Wow. Stop hating on your children. It almost looks like a bicycle wheel. Stop <laughs> hating. Why do they have like tile for a floor on their countertop? Okay, let's talk about other let's stuff. Yeah, okay. Funny bits. If you have some fails, oh, I expectations versus reality, text them to us. Do not text. Oh, don't text us pictures of your... Like your dog or something like that. You had like this macho dog that you were going to buy and it turned out to be like a yeah. chihuahua. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we have a couple things. Fall is coming. Oh, Santor Santorini, Greece. Sorry. The oh, cool. Yeah, all good. Well, let's tell you, educated people. What are you doing? Are we here? What are so you doing? We, have some, we have some fall games we're going to play, right? Okay. I have no idea what you're doing. Uh, well, I'm, I'm getting down this brilliant, this brilliant. Oh, there we go. Hey, look. Hey, I have a stick. Can you reach that? I can't. That was a short joke insult right there. Yeah, I know that was. Okay. So there. All right, we're going to do some. I'm going to get impaled. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. don't I need you to work. Live stream, guys. Yeah. Pray for me. I pre-thought this out. Yeah. There we go. Good okay. times. Look at that. All right, cool. So we're going to do some, some fall games because fall's here. Stop what, complaining. What supposed to? Stop whining about it. Well, you, you give right. me the faulty, the faulty stuff that I'm supposed right, to compete we're gonna, with. We're not going to bob for apples because of COVID. Yeah, everything's because of COVID. But, but we, we are, are going to do some fall stuff. We are going to do some fall stuff. We're going to pale an apple uh, on a stick, and then uh, we're going to eat it off. First, though, we need to weigh the apples because I feel like you're going to cheat on this. This is crazy. You're going to cheat. You're you have gone to the... Stop whining. When have I ever cheated? 
Okay. See? See? I'm not worried about cheating. I'm not worried about, I'm worried about getting about my losing. prizes. He's okay. about losing. That's what he's doing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yours is 4.8 ounces sure. uneaten. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's yours. That's mine. Mine is also 4.8 ounces uneaten. Thing. All right. You may impale your apple any way you want it. Onto the stick. If you... i got to eat an apple, man. This is horrible. Because you don't like fruit. I hate fruit. Why do you... What are you against? Fruit? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Do I mean, you... we, we've established that. I don't understand. We want to. We want to. We want to disclaim, Charles. How far am I supposed to put this? As live stream. Oh, we could do that. We could do that sway thing where you close your eyes. No. Oh yeah. Look how good I am. Oh, I'm so good. <laughs> okay. So we disclaimer. We don't try this stuff before we do it. If it's a disaster. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Weird. Notice the ice bucket challenge that we almost lost fingers from. All right, here we go. Charles, you're going to give hands. us a minute to hands behind because you're a cheater. Oh, no hands behind your I'm back. Gonna, I'm going to hold on. Okay, keep going. Just keep going. All right, Charles, tell me when we got. Mine's moving. Yeah, it's going to move. It's on me. Charles, tell us when to go. And you're going to give us a minute. We're going to eat as much as we can, and then we're going to weigh them and see who wins. Okay. How much I won by. That's horrible. Go. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. We didn't think this. Out. I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> I just want to watch him. Look at this. I can't. I. That's amazing. I'm making headway. Are you? Uh. -uh. You look like it. We might hit it harder. There we go. How did you get a bite out? Thirty seconds. Can I use my shoulder? Oh god, wait! Wait a I'm cheating. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, it hurts my jaw. Five seconds. <clears throat> I cheated and I still lost, I think. You were phenomenal at that. How'd you get the first bite? Uh, big mouth. <laughs> I think I could go to the bottom. I had to use my shoulder, but you didn't say anything about it, so I, I got 4.2. Put the thing on the thing. Boom, oh! baby. Dude, you took out a lot. Oh, wow. And I hate apples. 3.7, okay, here we go. You want to try it again on the table? Or do you want to do something yeah. else? No, let's go. Okay, you got your plate. We're weighing new apples. Oh, <laughs> another apple? Well, I guess we, yeah, new apple. All right, your second apple is 4.4. Okay. And my second apple is 4.6. All right, so what's the deal on this, though? You got to eat as much as you can without touching it. You just reduce weight. No, it's a thing. <laughs> He's trying any way, shape, or form. So now we're just trying to get it, eat as much as possible. So this one, I think you're going to win. Why? Do you really want me to tell you? Yeah. Because your nose is going to hold it. <laughs> yes! Yes! All right. Remember, there's, a, you really remember there's a spike you. above your head. Charles, tell me when it minutes. Go on. Just tell me when to start. Come on, man. Come on. You good? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. By the way, that's the hardest I've ever heard you laugh. <laughs> mm. Okay. You, you won, dude. You won. You gonna spit it out? Mm. 
Probably the dude that hates apples is the one that's finishing it out, and the one that likes apples is the one that can't handle it. I think you should lose from that. Just saying, guys. You want to text in? I got apple juice. Mm. You, you, you won, dude. You won. He's got like he's got like one bite left of this apple. Mm. Mm. Do you really want me to put this up here? Okay, you win. Good job. Mmm. Okay. Are we going? Are we going by challenge? Mmm. Mm -hmm. well, what are we doing? Mm. Or is it we're one and one, so what's the last one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got an apple seed stuck in between my teeth. That's horrible. We're one and one, but technically you're cumulative up on me. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> do you want to do this last challenge? Yeah. Well, praise God it's not apples. Stop lying about it. You need more fruit in your life. We can agree to disagree. Why are you... Why are you stop weighing Oreos? <laughs> Alright. Alright, what are we supposed to do with this? Open your Oreos. Okay. We're going to stack Oreos with our lips. Once I've again, you got the advantage. What was it called? You the schnoz? The schnoz. The schnoz. All right. <laughs> Four Oreos. Uh, eight Oreos. How is that possible? Uh-oh. Yeah. Charles, you got any Oreos over there? Charles, eight Oreos. Oreos. Right, we're well, good. We need your two Oreos, Charles. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that sacrifice. I'll get you more. Um, I don't have any more. All right, so... um. Eight Oreos, uh, seven, seven Oreos. Use seven. Oh, yep, yeah, seven, just seven. Seven. All right, um. What are we doing? Oh, six. Six Oreos. We're going to try to stack Oreos in a stack just using our mouths. From one plate to another? One plate to another. How many? There goes an apple seed. How many? How many? All right, I want a disclaimer on the, I only have six. Do you have I, six? I have crumbles. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. All right, so. Do you want to do first one to stack all six on a, on the, a plate, or do you want to do how many we can do in a minute? First to stack from one to the other. Okay. Um, but it has to be stacked. It cannot. They cannot fall down, right? It has to be stacked. All right. Um, I just want to eat them. Is that a bad thing? Disclaimer on the apple. Uh, I think I almost choked on that one. It was. I could not get that first bite down, but I was determined to not lose. So. All right, Charles, time to go. Uh, so it's it's just first one to get it done. So we have no theme music? I think there's a minute. Oh, I like that. Okay. The theme music helps me. Does it now? Yes. Okay. Set, go. Oh, I got mine in pieces. Ah! Oh, no! Oh! Done, baby. Oh! Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay. Stay down. Stay down. Man. Why do I always. <laughs> you always win with food stuff. <laughs> Alright. Chopstick challenge. Hey, man, you gotta be Warriors, bro. What I'm is the penalty? Fighter. What do I have to do because you won? Huh? What do I have to do because you won? Oh. I don't remember. How about, okay, how about I will not, how about I will not, I drink honey in my tea every oh, morning. We had, that's what I we was had, going to we do. We agreed that you would not put cream and sugar in your coffee, and I would not put honey in my tea tomorrow morning. Yep. If So if I lost, I would not put honey in my tea. If you lost, you would not put cream and sugar. This is a pretty big deal because I drink green tea every morning with honey in it, uh, 365 days a year. Once Later again, time. praise God, because I put a bit of sugar puts, and cream. He puts about in eight, my coffee. eight packs of sugar in, and about what? <laughs> What's it? The power team that used to come in and uh, yeah. get phone books and rip phone That's books you. up and back. Yeah. That's what I do with sugar packs. All right, I will I not. I get big, and I'm like, <laughs> I will not. It really <laughs> is like that, and I just dump them in like this. It's like eight sugars <laughs> and then like eight creams. Oh, it's more than eight creams, but that's okay. <laughs> I was trying to make the people think well nah, of you. Come on. They don't. All right, uh, we're going to pray out here for y'all. 
<laughs> and um, we thank you all for checking in. Is there any activities that you have coming up? I do. We have the fall retreat that is coming up. Yours is October 20th. October 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Third. Okay. What season is it in? October. No, that's the fall. That's a month. Okay. Is that it's what it's fall called? It's a fall retreat. Okay. It's called Camp Logos. Yeah. Which Logos is meaning the word. And mine is Reboot, and it's October 28th through 30th. So Next weekend. Sign up online, fba.org. Um, Either yeah. one. Middle school, go to high school, yep. sign up on there. 50 yeah. bucks, get a hoodie. 50 bucks, and every person that you sign up with you is 10 bucks less. It's a great deal. Yeah. It's a you can't, sweet deal. Listen, parents, you can't feed your teenage Yeah, and this male is all child. foods, hoodie, yeah. everything. You can't feed your male child at home for that. That inexpensively. No. Nope. S- send them and it'll be, you'll be saving money. You are saving money by sending them and, to us. And they'll get to know the Lord a little better. And each yeah. other. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a great time. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Get away. Get Oreo away from. Oreo stacking. Hmm? We're going to close in prayer. All right. Close in prayer. Father, thanks for the time to hang out with the people. I pray that you'd bless them. Our Lord, if one's having a rough night, I pray that you'd help them to feel your love and know your grace. And I thank you for the, the fun we can have. I pray that the parents and kids would, uh, teens and students would, would go um, have fun with each other and know that uh, life can be uh, 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 just a joy to live. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, send us pictures of your stack of Oreos with your mouth. Uh, maybe lay off hilarious. the apple thing. Maybe just put an apple on a plate with yeah. it, slice it up and eat it. Yeah, just do that and see how quickly you can eat the, the slices. But Jeffrey and Camilla, thank you for coming on too tonight. Sorry, Spitalnik. JD was on. JD Shane, was on. The, the, the hazel leaves were on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, cool. Yeah. All, um, right. all right. Hey, guys, we'll talk to you later. Peace out. Love you all. See you.